Thank you, Lucky, for being here with us at the Blues Festival in Seravezza. We're very pleasure. proud to yeah. have you here. Thank you for having me. My honor. It's the most beautiful blues festival in Italy. So. It's gorgeous. I was just walking around and meeting all the people and yeah, absolutely wonderful. Uh, we want to know all about you. Oh, so no. when you started playing, <laughs> when you discovered your, the magic in your hands, when did you, fell, you fell in love with the organ, with the Ammon organ and with the clavinet. Yeah. And when you start writing your, your own songs, everything. Sure. Long story. Yeah. Your young but long story. Well, I started playing. You know, I grew up in Adelaide, in yeah. um, Australia, a fairly small city compared to Sydney and mm -hmm. Melbourne. And um, my mum was going out with a blues guitar player. Yeah. And um, so that was all pretty wild. And we had a, we had a piano in the house. So uh, he would play blues records and my brother and I would try and jam along and try and copy all the things that were going on on the record. And uh, that was kind of how it all, all started really. And then from there, I was doing gigs at the age of 15, blues gigs like honky tonk piano and, and rock and roll piano. And then it was uh, other musicians that, that I met that um, introduced me to the Hammond organ. And then as soon as, I, as soon as I found the Hammond organ, it was like, you know, instead of this on a piano where you go, ding, you'd, on the organ you'd go, wow! And it would just, for as long as you wanted to hold it down, it was like, oh, the power! It was, yeah, it was really... It really was amazing and I think the fact that I got to play a real Hammond, my first experience with a Hammond organ was a real one as opposed to a, um, a like an organ sound on a keyboard. So I had that really organic uh, analog just sound coming at me. Like tactile. tactile. Exactly, yeah. Just really hitting my ears and I was like, oh wow, this is, this is new, this is cool. Um, I'm going to do that. It vibrated your body. <laughs> it did, it did, certainly did, and probably the neighbors as well. <laughs> <laughs> but you were still in Adelaide when did this happened. Yes, that's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and then you start playing the organ and yeah, I started, left Adelaide. That's right, I started playing the organ and uh, uh, probably more than the piano and then uh, uh, these, I kept meeting these amazing musicians in Adelaide and um, that introduced me to more types of music like funk music and soul music. So um, that's where the clavinet comes in. There was always this sound that I could hear and I didn't know what it was. And um, I, I did have a, f a, 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 a digital keyboard and it had a, a patch on it called and it just said clav. And I was like, and I'd play it and I was like, that sounds a bit similar to this other sound. Clav, and then I did a bit of research and found out it was a clavinet, and then I was like, "Oh, I've just got to, I've got to find one of these." And luckily enough, I found one for a hundred dollars in a second-hand store in Adelaide. My friend rang me up and went, "There's a clav in the in the store. You've got to come down now and, and get it." And so I, I went down there, and, and like this was before the internet, so I didn't even I didn't even know what it looked like. So I walked in there, and I was like. What is it? <laughs> what, what is this? And I saw this old thing with like when it was all wood on top and it looked kind of a bit sort of flimsy and I thought, what is that? And I opened it up and there's strings. Oh, that must be it. Yeah. And that's how, that's how the clav started. <laughs> okay, so you have two lovers. The that's right. Yeah. And the clav. I love them equally. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you start your own, your own music, not just touring with your brother and other yeah. bands. So you... You, you started writing your own material. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, once I moved to Sydney, um, I was playing in lots of blues bands and then also playing with some big Australian artists. And uh, then my brother and I, we formed a band called The Hands for a while. And then we were continuing, both of us playing with lots of different people. And then in about 2010, I was playing, I was doing this final tour with a huge Australian band called Powderfinger and they were finishing and, uh, and I was going, hmm, what am I going to do now? And I thought, you know, maybe this is the perfect time to actually start putting out albums under my own name and try and tour that. And 
yeah, I, I, I don't think I had huge aspirations at that point, but, but um, yeah, things just started to happen, and then I started to get some momentum on the internet, and was doing more gigs, and then I was getting offers to come overseas, and um, in 2015, and it's just kind of grown and grown and grow. since then. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you also found your, you have also found your voice. That's right. Yeah. So, so let's say something about this. Otherwise, it seems you're just, you know. Yeah. Go and play. Yeah? Absolutely. Well. Can we? My whole career, I've been surrounded by these amazing singers. So many incredible singers in Australia, and you learn and you watch, and you're like, oh, I want to be able to do that. And that's so in the and the passion that they have, you know, when they sing, it's really, you know, you can't, you can't help but be drawn in. So that was like, that's, that's the way I feel. That's, I want to make the audience feel that same way that, that I was feeling. So, um, yeah, I've worked a lot on my singing over the last uh, 12 years. And, um, and I try and do that every time I sing. I just try and bring the audience with me same with my playing as well and um yeah it's it's i'm really happy with where it's got to you know it's a, i feel like it's powerful and emotive and uh but you know there's a, i always feel like i'm a keyboard player first singer second but maybe one day <laughs> who knows but we the public we we just get the whole lot to go that's together, right together so <laughs> it's not easy play the way you play and sing along that's right, yeah. yeah. It takes a lot. It's, um, uh, I always give a lot in my performances and um, yeah, I love, I love doing that. Is it, is it nice, I suppose, but also a bit... Uh, does, it put, uh, does it put you under pressure to be known as the Jimi Hendrix of oh. keyboards or... Okay, it's an honor, but... It, yeah, it does. Uh, that was a phrase that got thrown around a lot. Um, when I first started, and and I thought, hmm, that's that's some big, yeah, that's a big statement to say. Yeah. But I, I sort of could understand why people would say it because, um, you know, the energy and the the power, and I like to think I'm creative. But it, I mean, if I had even one percent of the talent that Jimi Hendrix has, I'll I'll be very happy. <laughs> I bet so. Um, do you? How do you fi find um, the European people listening to blues compared to you go all around the world, and not just not just Australia? No, so I, I think in in Europe and Italy, Europe, um, I find it I find it amazing. You know, um, in Australia, it's a bit trickier um, if you haven't had songs on the radio, if you haven't had hits hit songs. It's hard. It takes a lot of work to to really break through. But I feel like the culture in most of Europe, I think people are more open to discovering and going out to festivals. Even if, if even if they don't know you, even if they, they participate, yeah, yeah, they. I think they trust that the people putting on the show um, are going to get great artists you know and they that that's enough for them you know they'll go and it's a great place and and then hopefully that they'll walk away going wow i've just seen something i'd never heard of before in my life and now i love them you know and i want to hear it exactly again and again, again. yeah yeah so thank you for being here and it's just the first time there'll be others awesome i look forward to it thank you for having me <laughs> thank you very much <laughs>